Hello everyone, my name is Dane. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we move from time invariant domain metrics like MTBF and MTTF through to a time variant metric such as a Babel distribution. Um, and we're going to cover a couple of key things that, or tools that we can use uh, to make that transition. All right, so we're going to be looking at how we take an existing data set um, and use a, a Babel fitting function um, to fit variable distribution parameters to that data set. And, and we can do that um, with the same type of information that you would use to calculate things like MTBF and MTTF. We're also going to have a look at Ybase, which allows us to um, estimate a beta parameter for a variable distribution um, and still use the, the underlying data set for MTBF, MTTF or an existing eta value. And lastly, we're going to have a look at the gamma function, which allows us to take our averages our mean time to failure, mean time between failure values, and convert them to the correct eta value in a variable distribution given uh, a beta that we've chosen. So why are we doing this? Essentially, it comes down to accuracy and an improvement of our both maintenance and capital planning strategies. So the more we know about the times in which failures will occur, um, the better we can plan and schedule those interventions and maintenance tasks. Um, unfortunately, MTBF and MTTF don't have a time component, and that's why it's important to make a jump to a time um, time variant distribution, uh, especially when we go into things like automating uh, some of our planning. That that time component is is very critical. Just as a quick side note. Uh, throughout this video, I'm going to be using MTBF and MTTF interchangeably. Um, they are actually different, and one's for, used for repairable systems, the other one's used for non-repairable systems, um, but they're both aggregates or means of an existing data set. I'm going to assume that you you already know how to use those properly. Um, we're not going to cover off those in this video, um, so keep that in mind when you hear me talking about those things. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing we're going to have a look at is how do we fit a variable distribution to an existing data set? And in this case, I'm going to assume that the data set is the same data set that you've used to calculate your time to failure or time between failure values. Um, and there's many different ways we can do it. Um, there's free tools out there like this one here. If you just Google uh, variable fitting online, the very first uh, answer that came up for me or the response that came up for me is this free statistics and forecasting software, which which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, but there's lots of other things like Python libraries, MATLAB libraries, Excel libraries, and, and um, different things out there that you can use to do the same sort of variable fitting. They do use subtly different methods. This one it says here is a, a maximum likelihood method, but there's kind of different nuances with the approach. Um, to come up with those parameters and they've, they've all got their benefits and weaknesses. So have a look into that if you've got more time. Before we go on, just a quick recap of the Babel parameters and what they mean. Eta, the first parameter, is also referred to as the scale parameter or characteristic life. And it's the value in which that the distribution falls around. Um, a larger characteristic life means that the distribution's stretched out. Um, the beta parameter or shape parameter changes the essentially the spread of that distribution around that eta value, uh, and the gamma or offset uh, shifts it in time to the left or to the right. But essentially, what I want to illustrate here is that um, this this free fitting tool here uh, takes in the same type of data that you would to use. To, to calculate your mean times. Um, and it also lets you specify the bounds on the shape parameter. Uh, just as a quick recap, anything less than one on the shape parameter is typically infant mortality or early life failures. Uh, one is random. So if you use the value of one, if I set the minimum and max to one, you will get the same value out as your mean, mean time to failure or between failures. Uh, and anything over one, indicate some sort of increase in time, wear out or end of life type um, shape. So here we have a whole bunch of sample data in there already. 
uh, if I press the compute button, it's going to take this data and fit a shape and scale parameter. So this is a two parameter variable distribution fitting function. There's also a three parameter one um, in some of those other libraries that you'll see, which includes a gamma, which is an offset. Uh, but what you'll notice here is there's the scale parameter of 316 should be in the ballpark of your mean time to fail failure value. It'll be plus or minus 20% somewhere in there. The relationship between the gamma, oh, sorry, the relationship between the eta value and or scale parameter and your mean time um, is defined by the gamma function, which we're going to talk about later in this video. So I'll show you how to go from um, this value to an MTBF or MTTF and, and back again. Uh, but anyway, this shows that there's a shape parameter of 2.5, which is a mild wear out. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Pretty simple as that. Using, using these parameters here, you can get a distribution that still meets your uh, MTBF in terms of your data here, but now it has uh, a time varying component that goes up as the, the likelihoods of failure go up as the, the asset gets older. Uh, lastly, just to explain these data points coming in, um, they can be anything from, you know, hours, minutes, weeks, days, years, whatever you want. Uh, so this number indicates that it's 461, let's call them hours for the purposes of this, between um, the install or commissioning to the actual failure event that's been recorded. Um, whatever scale or units that you want to put on these numbers, they will be reflective in the output as well. So if you if this is in hours, then your output's in hours. Um, this The corresponding scale parameter is also in hours and so on. So it just remains constant across the inputs and outputs, whatever you choose. All right, so next up is Ybase. And essentially, if you boil it down, Ybase is just an estimate or guesstimate of uh, the failure parameters that you're going to use. Um, there's nothing particularly wrong with this approach. It is still kind of using input information like experience and um, opinion and, and things of that nature. It is a lot more subjective. Um, and it's typically used in cases where there's not a lot of data to inform the, the fitting functions. Um, that being said, it, it is still a valid approach and you, you've got to use what you've got. So um, Ybase is, is used again where there's not, not that much data uh, and you want to get a workable solution. So as an example, um, let's say you have a one failure point, uh, a widget a, a widget A has lasted for 100 hours and then and then failed. Um, we could say that this widget is maybe like a car tire or something. And we know from experience and from you know, engineering principles that the, there is some element of time or relationship to time um, and use, for example, with a car tire and when it, it may fail. So that 100 hours, we can, we can pick a, a beta value of 3, 8, 10, whatever we want to skew the distribution towards an end of life or wear out type uh, representation um, it, it, with a with a variable function. So, so it's essentially filling in the gaps um, and making educated guesses or guesstimates where um, we're lacking data. All right. Lastly, we're going to have a look at the gamma function. Um, you can find out more about it if you go to Google and type in reliable wiki Vable gamma the first uh, result that comes up is the Vable distribution rely wiki page um, and what we're interested in here is this section here um, the m the mean or mttf section of the Vable distribution functions um, you'll notice there's a uh, gamma function in the middle of some of these formulas here um, what this is essentially showing you is the relationship between the scale parameter or the eta value that we just discussed uh, and mean time to failure in the two parameter case and three parameter case up the top here. 
So what this allows us to do is go between a characteristic life and a mean time to failure if we know the beta um, and vice versa. If we know the other values, we can plug them into the formula and, and get each of them. So I'm just going to demonstrate this really quickly. Uh, let's hop over to Microsoft Excel. Um, here we go. And uh, I've created three columns here. One, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, mean time between failure, let's put a thousand in there. The eta value we're trying to find out. Um, the beta can be anything w that we want. Uh, and then the, the gamma function here, we can use Excel's inbuilt gamma function. So if you type equals gamma, uh, and then according to the formula back in uh, this page here, the formula is uh, eta times gamma of one over beta plus one. Um, and so going back to Excel, uh, we've got one over the beta here plus one, uh, and we times that by the eta value to get um, the MTBF. Uh, if we want to go back the other way, we need to, whoops, put this back. If we want to go back the other way, we need to divide the MTBF by this value here to get the eta. So this is uh, equal to that divided by that. There we go. So to get uh, a mean time between failure out of a Babel distribution, um, a mean time between failure of a thousand, the parameters, if the beta is three, the, the characteristic life would be uh, a bit over 1,100 and about 1,120. Uh, if I change the beta here, you'll see the, the eta updates as well. Uh, one, one interesting case is with a beta of one, the gamma function here evaluates to one as well. So gamma of two is equal to one. Uh, and so this is why you can represent uh, MTBF as a variable distribution if the beta is one then the eta, the characteristic life, will be exactly the same as the MTBF. Um, but it's not for all cases. So as soon as you start changing that beta value, the, um, the eta also changes. And you need the gamma function to go back and forth between the two. That's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Uh, have a great day.